What's up YouTube, Daniel Carter at Afro Herb Keeper here. Today we're going to be going through all the stuff I got at NARBC Arlington. Uh, this time it's mostly just supplies, but we are also going to be putting those things into their respective homes. So, without any further ado, let's get started. <laughs> So this right here is our selection. Um, lots of wood pieces this time, some stuff for naturalistic setups, a uh, Pangea gecko ledge, and a Zoomed goodie bag. This year we have a uh, Zoomed product catalog for 2016. This is just full of lots and lots of Zoomed products. They've got um, lots of good advice for new keepers on heating, lighting, etc. Also in here we have free sticker, sample of juvenile bearded dragon food, sinking mud and musk turtle food, and natural box turtle food. Uh, thankfully enough, I actually have both of these and an adult bearded dragon, so these will actually get to go to use. Also in the Zoomed bag, we have a free sample of Pangea's new uh, breeding formula, Complete Diet for Reproductive Adult Geckos. This was actually a handout from Alpha Geckos, uh, who are vending at NARBC Arlington. So I will be doing a product review of this in exchange for the free sample. Also included in the Zoomed bag was a heating and lighting chart for uh, lots of different species. Now as for the things I've purchased, um, right here we've got a Pangea acrylic magnetic gecko ledge. I've actually got two of these already, um, a large one in Lemonhead's cage and a small one in my breeding pair of Gold Dust Day Geckos vivarium. This new one is going into the second Gold Dust Day Gecko setup. Right here we have a half coconut hide. This is going into Tipsy the Garter Snakes setup over there. Here we've got a big bag of sphagnum moss. This is... Uh, Galapagos brand. I ran out of New Zealand sphagnum a while ago and I had to use a different species than I normally do for the baby gold dust day geckos, but I'm probably going to replace theirs with this stuff and I'm also going to use a lot of it in Kosho the blood pythons cage. All of these are for different animals. Um, this little cork bark flat is going to the young box turtle. This cork round uh, is probably going to go either to skink or to blue the tegu. Uh, these are normally fairly expensive, but at expos you can find really good prices on pretty sizable pieces. This one is definitely going to blue. It's a pretty big piece. It was only $15. He should be able to use this as a hide as opposed to the stupidly heavy uh, ceramic tortoise hide he has in there right now. And lastly, this uh, big manzanita branch is going into Lemonhead the Crested Gecko's tank. Uh, give her a bit more space to perch. Now, last but not least, I think these are probably the coolest thing I picked up. These are Josh's Frog's Springtails. And Springtails are a little tiny invertebrate species. You can see all those little bitty white dots are Springtails. This is a thriving culture. Um, and these guys are actually an integral part of a uh, naturalistic vivarium's cleanup crew. If I open this up, you can see these guys, their main diet is actually mold. And so I've given them some white rice, which has turned into mold, and that's what they've been eating. That's why they're uh, doing so well in here. But I picked these guys up. It was a pretty cheap culture. Um, I highly recommend Josh's Frogs for vivarium supplies. Not sponsored by them or anything, but I've gone to them a lot before, and they have never disappointed me, so... Like I said, this big flat piece of bark is going into the box turtle terrarium. Um, I'm going to remove the turtle herself first. She's doing well, eating lots of crickets, lots of veggies. I did actually go ahead and rearrange her tank a bit. So now she's got her half log here, which is partially buried, uh, her big cork bark flat, her water dish, and a piece of cuddle bone to chew on if she needs more calcium. This coconut hide is going over here with Tipsy the garter snake. She already had one, but her cage was a little lacking otherwise, so now she's got two, multiple choices. 
Tipsy is very unamused. She's tiny, but she is a mean snake. Well, I'm unwrapping the gecko lead now. They are always so clear when they first come out of the package. It's definitely going to lose that after a few weeks in there with the geckos. Now that it's been washed and dried, the lead is being installed right here. And now that those magnets are in place, it's pretty firmly stuck. The manzanita branch does look a little larger than I thought it would in the crested gecko cage, but it fits great and it's helping hold this uh, tillandsia in place, so I think it's a win-win. I think she's enjoying the branch too, it looks like it suits her. Uh, fits her pretty well, so hopefully that should become a nice, uh, probably a primary perch for her. I expect to see her sitting on it quite a bit. Now, in order to use this sphagnum, I am going to have to rehydrate it first. So I've pulled about a third of the bag, and we're going to let this soak for uh, maybe 10 minutes. All right, about half of the sphagnum block has been used in Kosho the Blood Python's tank. She looks pretty grumpy right now, but I think she's going to appreciate it. Now, Blue over here has actually made quite a mess of his cage, so before we put those new pieces of cork bark in, I went ahead and gutted his tank, and real quick right now, we are going to do some remodeling. Alright, Blue has been reintroduced. It's a bit of a different look for his setup, but the cork bark pieces look really nice. Uh, I went ahead and added a bigger water dish too, just because I had it lying around. I think Blue... Yeah, I think he's mostly focused on the soil. He hasn't had uh, stuff like this in a while. Blue certainly seems to be enjoying his uh, new cork bark, so we are going to give him some scrambled eggs as a bit of a housewarming gift. As always, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like or comment, and if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.